Hello, friends. Welcome to Story Behind Podcast. This is the show for people who love hearing a good story and who believe the world could use more positivity. We're the team behind God Updates and God Too, and we hope these weekly short stories will brighten your day. One of Colton Dixon's twins was born without a pulse, and the Christian singer cried out to God. Written by Mel Johnson. Read by Alyssa Forsberg. When Colton Dixon's twins arrived, one of his baby girls was born without a pulse. So, the Christian singer and his wife prayed for divine intervention and got a miracle. After learning they would be having twins, Colton Dixon, age 28, and his wife, Annie, experienced the perfect pregnancy. Annie never got sick, not once. Every checkup was textbook perfect, the former American Idol contestant turned Christian celebrity recalled. But when it came time for the arrival of the Colton Dixon twins, Ava Dior and Athens Elizabeth, things didn't go quite so smoothly. But when it came time for the arrival of the Colton Dixon twins, Ava Dior and Athens Elizabeth, things didn't go quite so smoothly. The delivery was a different story, Colton said. Following 30 hours of labor, doctors told Annie it was time for an emergency C-section. And that's when things got really scary. One of Colton Dixon's twin girls was born without a pulse. The couple realized they were powerless to do anything about it. And that's when the Christian singer and his wife Annie had to rely on their faith to see them through. We never expected our little Ava Dior would arrive in the world without a pulse. In that moment, we had a choice, faith or fear, he said. We watched and prayed as the doctors and nurses resuscitated our daughter back to life. Those prayers continued as little Ava, or Dior as her parents have taken to calling her, stayed in the NICU so doctors could continue treating her. And God made sure that Colton Dixon's twins were reunited. After several days in the NICU, Dior was able to join us at home, happy and healthy. That was such a great day, the proud dad said. Life doesn't always happen the way we want it to, but we believe that life is more about the way we respond to things than what happens to us. We thank God and our amazing doctors and nurses for our two little miracles. What a beautiful blessing Colton Dixon's twins are. Too often, life takes a turn we never saw coming. And that's when faith is so important. It doesn't mean we'll always get the outcome we desire, but faith is trusting that God will get us through any situation, no matter how dire. Rich man learns he's valued the wrong things when wife refuses to help him on his deathbed. Written by Mel Johnson. Read by Alyssa Forsberg. In a parable about a rich merchant with four wives, the man thinks he's ranked his brides in order of their value. But when he finds himself gravely ill and facing death, the true identity of each of his wives holds a valuable lesson for us all. Like many inspiring movies and books, this short story may be fictional. However, the impact that this work will have on its readers is very real. Enjoy! There was a rich merchant who had four wives. He loved the fourth wife the most, adorning her with rich robes and treating her to delicacies. He took great care of her and gave her nothing but the best. The merchant also loved the third wife very much. He was very proud of her and always wanted to show her off to his friends. However, the merchant lived in great fear that she might run away with some other men. He too loved his second wife. She is a very considerate person, always patient, and in fact, is the merchant's confidant. Whenever the merchant faced some problems, he always turned to his second wife and she would always help him out and tide him through difficult times. Now the merchant's first wife is a very loyal partner and has made great contributions in maintaining his wealth and business, as well as taking care of the household. However, the merchant did not love the first wife and although she loved him deeply, he hardly took notice of her. Before long, he knew that he was going to die soon. He thought of his luxurious life and told himself, now I have four wives with me but when I die, I'll be alone. How lonely I'll be. Thus he asked the fourth wife, I loved you most, 
endowed you with the finest clothing and showered great care over you. Now that I'm dying, will you follow me and keep me company? No way, replied the fourth wife, and she walked away without another word. The answer cut like a sharp knife right into the merchant's heart. The sad merchant then asked the third wife, I have loved you so much for all my life. Now that I'm dying, will you follow me and keep me company? No, replied the third wife. Life is so good over here. I'm going to remarry when you die. The merchant's heart sank and turned cold. He then asked the second wife, I always turn to you for help and you've always helped me out. Now I need your help again. When I die, will you follow me and keep me company? I'm sorry, I can't help you out this time, replied the second wife. At the very most, I can only send you to your grave. The answer came like a bolt of thunder and the merchant was devastated. Then a voice called out, I'll leave with you. I'll follow you no matter where you go. The merchant looked up and there was his first wife. She was so skinny, almost like she suffered from malnutrition. Greatly grieved, the merchant said, I should have taken much better care of you while I could have. Like the rich merchant, we all have four wives. Here's what that means. Fourth wife. The fourth wife represents our body. We spend lots of time tending to our body, washing it, dressing it, nourishing it with food. But no matter how well we care for it, our body will eventually fail us and be left behind upon death. God designed our earthly bodies to be temporary. For it is said, all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of the grass. The grass becomes dry, and the flower dead. 1 Peter 1.24 The third wife is our stuff. Possessions, wealth, status. Without a true relationship with Christ, many people get caught up chasing material things. Life becomes about impressing other people. Yet these things can vanish at any moment and certainly don't do us any good when our lives come to an end. Don't lay up treasures for yourself on the earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break through and steal, but make a store for yourself in heaven where it will not be turned to dust and where thieves do not come in to take it away. Matthew 6, 19-20 The second wife is our earthly relationships, friends, family, spouses. No matter how deep and how strong our relationships grow here on earth, they can only stand by us up to the grave. It's our relationship with the Almighty that secures any hope after death. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life, and I will raise Him up on the last day. John 6:40. The first wife in this modern day parable represents our soul. It's the only thing we can take with us after death. To keep our soul healthy, we must be in a relationship with our Lord and Savior Christ. And yet, too often, our spiritual life gets neglected as we pursue other things, money, love, careers. Just like the rich merchant in the parable, our priorities get flipped. He must increase, but I must decrease. John 3.30 Thankfully, it's never too late to turn to God. I pray this modern day parable blesses you and that you will share it to bless someone else. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that stays in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. John 15.5Thank you so much for listening to Story Behind Podcast. We're really glad you joined us for this week's story. To see photos and videos that may have been referenced in this episode, check out the links in the show notes. And if you enjoyed what you heard today, subscribe to our podcast and please tell a friend about us. We'd also love it if you'd rate us and leave us a review. It really does help more people find us. Story Behind is a Salem Web Network production.